Stats in general, but more specifically advanced stats, are taking over the baseball landscape. So we're deep diving into what these advanced stats mean and how we can use them to better evaluate players, teams, and baseball in general. Today we're going to be talking about pitching and fielding advanced stats. If you want to check out the offensive advanced stats, that was in the previous video. This is part two. I will go ahead and link that video in the description so you can check that out after this one. This is Smarter Baseball where we deep dive into everything going on throughout Major League Baseball. If you enjoy the content and want to support the channel, like the video, subscribe to the page, and turn on notifications. We are headed to 500 subscribers, and I want you to be able to be a part of the foundation of this channel as we blow this thing up and be able to cover more content and give you higher quality content. So let's get into pitching. And first, we're going to start again with just those basic counting stats. So for pitchers, we have stuff like their innings pitched, which is going to be in thirds of an innings, the amount of runs or earned runs that they gave up, hits, walks, strikeouts, all of this kind of stuff that you see it happen on the field and you know, okay, he just struck out that batter, so he just got a strikeout. He just gave up a home run, so that's a home run against him. All of this basic counting stuff that gets used in all of these other stats to determine how good pitchers are. Two very basic stats that people use a lot for pitchers is a pitcher's whip and their per nines. And let's get into whip first. Whip is walks plus hits per innings pitched. Basically, it's a measurement of how many base runners a pitcher gives up per inning because, as we know, generally more base runners results in allowing more runs. But the problem is, again, like we covered in the last video, not every hit is created equally, and not every hit, as we're going to get into way deeper in a lot of this stuff, is entirely the pitcher's fault. So now for per nines, we have hits, strikeouts, walks, and home runs per nine. Basically, this is just the average of over a full game, how many of each of these would a pitcher have. The problem again with this is that in a full nine inning game, you can face drastically different amounts of batters. So it's not a totally accurate representation of how often a pitcher is either going to strike somebody out or give up walks or something like that because you could face 27 batters in a perfect game, or you could face a lot more than that. So now let's just get to the granddaddy of them all for pitchers, and that is ERA, Earned Runs Allowed. And when we're going to talk about ERA here, that first word of earned is going to be the key word here. So ERA is a measurement of the amount of earned runs that a pitcher would give up over nine innings, which again, we already kind of covered in the per nines thing, but let's dive a little bit more into the weeds on this one. The big word here is earned. And again, like we talked about in the offensive stats video, when it comes down to hits and errors and what an earned run constitutes, that's not really up to the pitcher. That's determined by the scorekeeper. The scorekeeper is the one that determines whether something goes down as a hit or an error. And in a lot of cases, a lot of 50-50 balls, you're going to leave something like ERA that a lot of people use to really measure pitchers up to a 50-50 call by a scorekeeper of whether, yeah, that was an earned run, that's the pitcher's fault, or that wasn't an earned run and he did his job and that shouldn't go against him. So we're already going to have some discrepancies between what is and isn't an earned run and what should and shouldn't count towards the ERA, let alone then when we talk about situations, say, where we have a starting pitcher who walks a guy with two outs, gets taken out for a reliever, and that reliever gives up a home run the next pitch. Does that guy on first, should that count against the starting pitcher as an earned run? Most of the time, when you give up a walk with two outs, that guy's not going to score. So is that on the starting pitcher for allowing that walk, or is that on the reliever for giving up a bomb? And let alone then, now let's get into BABIP. Batting average on balls in play, which again, we covered in the last video. But real quick, it's just the average of when a ball gets put into play. When this comes to pitchers, though, there's so much of this that is not within their control. Again, just either that little blooper that falls in the Bermuda Triangle where nobody can get to, 
or that ground ball that just finds a hole through an infield not anymore now but maybe say because of when we had the shift going like there's so much that a pitcher you could argue he did his job he got a weak ground ball most of the time that should be an out but it just went somewhere where nobody was so his defense couldn't help him out is that against the pitcher or is it not so now let's get into percentages which i think is a little bit better measurement than the per nines because what these measure how they measure is strikeouts walks and home runs allowed per batter faced so the more batters that a pitcher may face in a game that doesn't affect this if a batter comes up to bat they have a 30 percent chance of getting a strikeout at 8% chance of walking and a 2.5% chance of hitting a home run. That's what this pitcher allows on average per batter. This brings us to our first real big advanced stat when it comes to pitching, and that's FIP, Fielding Independent Pitching. And this stat came from the idea that pitchers are really only in control of three outcomes. How many strikeouts they get, how many walks they allow, and how many home runs they allow. Because like I talked about with BABIP, there's so many different factors that are outside of a pitcher's control when a ball gets put in play, whether the fielder was in the right spot or whether it's a guy that can make a ridiculous play and get there or somebody that can't even get close. Like once a ball is put in play, that's not really up to the pitcher. So this stat tries to determine how good a pitcher is based on their control of those three outcomes. So I talked about in the offensive stats video that when we talk about runs created, there's a thing called linear weights. Basically, every outcome in a baseball game either has a positive or negative contribution towards runs being created. I.e., if you strike out, your team's less likely to score runs. If you hit a double, you're more likely to score runs. So based on that, this stat takes the outcomes of strikeouts, walks, and home runs, adds up the value of all of that, and then assumes league average results on balls in play and sets it to roughly the same scale as ERA. So if you know what a good ERA looks like, you know what a good FIP looks like. So now let's talk about expecteds and plus minus. First, we'll talk about expecteds. Basically, with expecteds, it tries to set as much stuff to league average results as possible. So in the case, say, of like expected FIP, it sets the home run per fly ball rate to about league average because generally that is something that roughly levels out. Yes, there are guys that give up more home runs. There are guys that give up less home runs. But for the vast majority of pitchers, it kind of fluctuates right around league average over a career. So what XFIP does is it sets now the home runs per fly ball along with the results on balls in play to what the league average would expect. And then based on the percentage of fly balls this guy allows and his strikeouts and walks, it sets that number again on an ERA scale so that if you know a good ERA, you know what a good expected FIP looks like. So where is expected compares between what happened and what probably should have happened plus and minus compares to how did this person do in this situation versus how would the league average have done in this situation plus and minus sets an era a fip whatever stat you're looking at it sets it on a league scale it basically takes into effects everything that was happening and how the average player would have done in that situation and puts this on a scale of 100 being exactly average when we're talking about pitching most of the time you see minus stats where you want a lower number being better so if a pitcher say had a 95 era minus that means that in the environment that they were in throughout that season they were 5% better than the league average pitcher would have been in that exact same scenario. So now let's get way into the weeds, and I'm going to throw a stat at you called Sierra that I only recently found out about. This stands for Skill Interactive ERA, and basically is FIP on steroids. What this stat does is just the same as FIP. It takes into account strikeouts, walks, and home runs, but it goes further on batted balls where instead of expecting the league average outcome, it takes the batted ball data 
and puts that into this as well. So it takes into account the type of contact that a pitcher gives up. So a guy that's getting weak ground balls at a really high rate is going to have a better Sierra because he's getting better batted ball data than a guy that's giving up a bunch of hard hit fly balls. And finally, this brings us to war. Wins above replacement. And again, like I said in the last video, replacement is the big word here. Basically, somebody went through and figured out if your team had to call up that 27th, 28th guy from AAA to come up and fill in, how would he produce on average? When you talk about war, we're comparing your major league player versus this replacement level player and how much better or perhaps worse a player is doing than what you would expect this replacement level player to be. And again, we generally have two types of war. We have baseball reference war or B war, and then we have fan graphs war or F war. And both of these sites calculate their war a little bit differently. Baseball reference tends to go more with the on-field results rather than the underlying stuff. So I believe that they measure ERA as their big part of war because they care more about what actually happened. How many earned runs did he give up? Not really what resulted in that. Fangraphs, on the other hand, looks a little bit more at the advanced stuff. So their big contributor war is FIP. Basically, they look at, well, what was the pitcher really in control of and how did that result in how good the pitcher did? So both of these sites take all of the pitcher stats, they add them up a little bit differently, but they spit out one number that's supposed to be the total encapsulation of how valuable a player was over that season. When we talk about war again, we're going versus a replacement level player. So zero war is a replacement level. Two war is your average everyday major league player. A five war season is supposed to be about all-star level and an eight war season would be your like MVP Cy Young type guys. But again, both of these sites disagree on the value of certain things and all of that. So again, take all of this with a grain of salt. Look at everything together. You shouldn't ever rely on just one advanced stat to be your all encompassing like, yep, that's exactly this type of player. So now let's talk about the defense behind pitchers. Basically, when we talk about advanced stats for fielding, it really comes down to only a handful of them at this point that we have availability to. The first one we're gonna talk about is defensive runs saved. So again, back to this idea of linear weights, basically any potential play that a fielder could be involved in has an assigned run value to it. And based on what a fielder either accomplishes or fails to get done, they get assigned value on that play. And when you take all of that together, add it all up, it comes to a number of the amount of defensive runs that a fielder either saved or allowed then based on making plays that other people couldn't or not being able to make those plays. Where defensive run save compares players based on being in the same position, UZR does this by breaking the field up into different zones, hence the name ultimate zone rating. And basically, again, it has a value to every play that a fielder could or couldn't make, and it takes the average of what a fielder in that zone would have done and compares that. Then it adds up all the value and you get your number for UZR. So UZR and defensive runs saved pretty much goes off of whether a play was or wasn't made. When we talk about outs and runs above average, now we're talking about the probability of a player being able to make that play. If a ball gets hit to a center fielder and they have a 75% chance of getting to it based on where they started, the angle of the ball and where it's going and all of that, and they catch it, they get that added probability, that 25% chance that they shouldn't have gotten to it, they get that added on. And that's what adds up to build up their outs or runs above average. Now on some sites too, like fan graphs, you'll see a total defensive rating where basically it adds up all of these advanced fielding numbers and then takes into account a fielder's position, pretty much like shortstop and center field 
are tougher defensive positions, so you get more inherent value by just playing those positions than you would say like first base. It adds all of this up together and spits out one number that shows how valuable defensively that player was. These are most of the advanced quote unquote stats that you're gonna see for both pitching and fielding. If there's anything I forgot, if there's anything you learned, any other comments you have, go ahead, drop a comment down below and let me know. I'm sure I missed something or got something wrong because it's just my stupid baseball brain's way of trying to figure these out. And like I said, we covered a whole bunch of other different stuff in the previous video on the offensive stats that we could also use in terms of pitching, like batted ball data and stat cast stuff and all of that. So if you want to, go ahead and check that stuff out so that you can hear about that as well. Thank you for watching and God help you if you made it this far. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did and want to support the channel, like the video, subscribe to the page, turn on notifications, do all of that nonsense, because we're trying to build this thing up. We want to smash past 500 subscribers. This is only the beginning. Let's blow this channel up together. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for supporting. I hope you have an awesome day, and I'll see you in the next one.